In this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I'm downsizing my reptiles. Um, I usually have had about 100 at any given time because I take them in, rehome re them, rehab them, and sell them on the site Emerald Scales. So if you're just here to learn about why I'm doing that, you can skip through the video. But first, I'm going to be showing you uh, the house and the moving process. So if you didn't know, I have a vlog series. The vlog series started as kind of documenting building a company around reptiles. Uh, it started as me and a friend in my bedroom uh, building this website and stuff, and so you can check out the full series if you want. But the most recent video was actually in a full-fledged house that we had where I lived and had all the animals and why I was forced to move out because of the animals kind of clashing with my neighbors. So, so what I'm gonna show you first is the progress on moving out and stuff and all that. But again, you can just skip forward if you want, but it might be interesting for you to see all that. So you can check out the full series below and we can get started. Then I'll come back here and talk about the downsizing and why I'm doing it. I have a, why is this unbuttoned? I look very promiscuous, hold on. It's like 50 degrees, but for some reason my cold tolerance is very low right now. So this is original Emerald Scales headquarters and we can head on in. So, uh, it, it's looking good. I cleaned a ton in here, but turns out I have to get a professional cleaner. There's Harriet's enclosure. Uh, she's in the 20 gallon right now, and that's my turtle. And I'll actually talk about what I'm doing today and how the process is going. So I plan on doing a kind of breakdown video on my year and a half experience living here and the evolution of the company and the channel and everything and myself as I lived here and I'll probably call it something like my neighbors called animal control on me or animal control came to my like why animal control came to my house that might be good because they did actually <laughs> animal control came to emerald scales uh, it was a surprise visit and I'll get into that in a different video but um long story short it went well and it was it was all good but it's still an interesting story and basically everything that happened in this home built up to that. So if you don't know, I uh, lived with my parents for a while until I was 19 and then I rented this available. Um, so I lived here for starting August 2019 and then I moved out very recently, which it's now October 2020. So had a pretty good run here and I probably would have stayed here longer if it weren't for a lot of issues that we ran into. The reason I rented it was because I needed more space for my animals to expand the company and to have a separate studio to film videos and, you know, just personal space because moving out's a normal sort of thing. So most recently, what I got done is I got the carpets cleaned. They look really good. It was only a hundred bucks for some guy to come and clean them. Um, he did a great job. I, I think it was Steam Giant or something. So if you, if you need a carpet cleaner, yeah, go with them. And then after I got that done, I emailed the landlord and the property manager saying that I need to end my lease early. And they didn't take it very well. They were they were unhappy. They they said that I went about this the wrong way and that they hoped that I leave peacefully. I, I said why we need to move out. I said I'm aware I'm gonna have to cover rent until there's a new tenant. I said I'm aware of the extra fees. I'm aware of everything I need to do and I've already moved out. Everything's out as of right now and then they were scared that I'd not leave pe- what does that mean? I'm gonna shoot up the neighborhood or something? I don't know what not leaving peacefully means that I damaged the property on purpose. I don't know what experiences they had in the past, but they were upset with me leaving. <laughs> so overall, I think they were a great landlord, great property manager. Yeah, they didn't take it too well. They said I need to get professional cleaners for everything. So um, I found someone online that <laughs> is willing to clean the entire house for $100. I don't think she actually speaks English, so it looks like she's using Google Translate, which I don't mind. She wants 100 bucks and she has zero reviews, zero example images. We'll see how it looks. Um, I'm happy to give new small businesses, new independent contractors, new anyone, just some business and, and give them a chance. Because why not? Also, a lot of people are confused because they think that I've already gotten my next house. I have not. I'm just staying somewhere else temporarily until uh, my 2020 taxes are filed. Because once I do that, I have an additional year of income to prove to a mortgage lender. And then once I can get a mortgage, um, I can actually purchase a house. So that's why I can't do much with animals in the meantime. And back in we go. Remaining stuff, we've got this like three foot enclosure that had a Dumeril's boa. And then this enclosure just had a, um, what's it called? Boa constrictor imperator. And then this 125 had some goldfish, which I don't know how to move this. 
I, I might just sell it. I mean, it's actually my girlfriend's, but she said I can just sell it. So if you want a 125, here it is. <laughs> and then that's Goldie and one of my female, lep or my only female leopard geckos enclosure, which I actually never showed off. So there it is. It was kind of a fail because I don't really like it. But uh, what I have been doing is I swept almost everything. I think I did finish sweeping actually. Um, I do have to fix some more things in here and do a little more progress, but the house is back up on the market as a rental. And you can hear the very upset fire detector. And here's the strip of houses. Pretty epic. No scratches. I've become a master of getting things through these teeny tiny doors. I dumped the sand in a creek a while ago, or just like a like a drainage ditch, and it hasn't moved at all, but now there's little paw prints in it. I don't know if that's front. There's also spiders all over it. I'm just gonna kinda spread it out a little bit. It's been here for months, nobody's complained, but hopefully the rain will take more away if I do this. That's a cool rock, look at that. You know, notice I'm kind of talking very quietly which I'll talk about in a minute, once I walk away. The thing about this neighborhood is, especially when people build a grudge against you, you no longer feel like you have a private household within the community, but instead, it, this is what I told the landlord, it feels more like you have a guest bedroom with a bunch of roommates. And even then it's worse because at least roommates can know personal space sometimes, but people here don't. like. They'll just impede on your property and start banging on your door. Also, I just noticed a rake. I don't really want this rake though, so I'm just gonna... We're gonna leave it there. I actually need it. Because um, when I take tanks out, I dump substrate everywhere. And it's kind of obvious. Like, you can see that pile right there. So I'm just gonna kind of deal with them. It's like my old nature videos. Look at this massive slug I just found. I don't know if they're always this sluggish, you could say, or if he's dying. He looks kind of sad though. I should probably stop rolling him. Ooh, that's a big worm. That scared me. Boink. Oh yeah, look at this. I'm a herping channel. Cause what do we got here? A green tree frog with a mosquito. Please eat it. He's kind of cute. Remember when I painted that door in the other video? The paint can't just leak, it's completely empty now. <laughs> it's all over the porch. It's everywhere for some reason. One of the things I will give this neighborhood credit for is it has access to a pretty nice walking trail. And I've actually biked on this trail. You're allowed to mountain bike on it. And it's it's more just a dirt, dirt path, not much so mountain, but it's cool. And I'm going to walk over here and have a nice little stroll and talk to you about some... I guess more personal stuff on the animals and uh, more personal opinions instead of just focusing on the moving. Nobody in this neighborhood has any good taste in cars. We've got an old Mazda 3. It's just a bunch of Camrys and Scions. Who drives Scions other than those cool sporty ones? Also, I don't know, there's someone in that car staring at me and I'm making fun of their car. Okay, this is awkward. Okay, we're at the walking trail. We might have to run on the walking trail to run away from the awkward. And juicy. I'm by myself. In between a bunch of people's houses, and I just said juicy out loud. I'm a little child stomping through mud, but I already got paint on these shoes, so who cares? They're not even my shoes, they're Alice's. But I guess they're mine now. It's pretty out here though. Pretty, pretty lame. Haha. <laughs> this is the closest I've gotten to herping in like 20 years. I don't care if I'm 20 years old. It's still the closest. And now I have to get through this. Should I just give up and turn around? No, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. <sighs> Why? You know how I said there was one nice thing about this neighborhood? I guess I have to take it back because I can't even get to the walking trail. <laughs> we did it. Big brain. If you're in Durham, you might actually recognize this trail. And I, honestly, I don't even care if anyone finds this location because I am gone in a minute. This, this is the last time I'll be on it. So if you want to come out and murder me because you hate my opinions, 
now's your last chance. I'm currently unarmed, so go for it, I guess. And now I'll stop procrastinating on the topic. Uh, downsizing the reptiles and how temporary versus permanent it is. I, I might look more ahead of me so I don't um, crash <laughs> with my body. So I started the channel in 2012. It was not my first channel. I think I started my first in 2010 when I was 10 years old, which is against YouTube Terms of Service. But um, So I've basically been on YouTube for 10 years, which is exactly half my life. <laughs> not just being on, but actually uploading. To YouTube. I used to make Lego stop motion videos, I used to do sports stacking, lots of non-animal related stuff, and then I made this channel. It was called NC Nature News, as lots of you like to meme about. <laughs> and it was just about North Carolina nature, as little baby me did nature videos. And at first it was mostly birds, mammals, just plants, mushrooms, whatever I could find, because I was 11, just walking around the woods. Nature trail, let's go. And I'll do stuff like this, I'll just find random trails explore around and see what I find and eventually reptiles were the thing that I'd always start finding. I'm actually going to show you this as I walk because it's quite pretty actually. So from there I started realizing you can actually keep reptiles and when I realized you could keep reptiles I started trying it out and I would catch native animals and keep them and it didn't go that well. I really shouldn't have been allowed to do that. So many birds. Birds used to be my thing. From there I realized you could keep exotic animals and that's when I started looking into other species like ball pythons and corn snakes and I almost got a corn snake but I got a ball python as my first and I cannot get through this can I? Whoops. I just tripped. And so yeah, reptiles became the thing. I started doing videos on my own reptiles, and then eventually I started doing care videos. And that's really how-tos are what got my channel going. Because usually stuff that people search for is what's going to perform the best. Because people don't just search for a vlog and then click on some random person. But you can have zero subscribers and make a care video, and people will Google how to blank, and your video might show up. So that's how I grew the channel. And basically for eight years straight, I've been doing reptile stuff. And when I was a kid, I'd always jump around with these random hobbies, random projects, and I never did the same one for more than a year or two. And so reptiles are the one that I've stuck with the longest. And I think you can tell by my enthusiasm in some videos, um, <laughs> you can tell that I hate on a lot more species a lot, which it's still fun to do, even if it's memeing or not. Um, Cause I like being honest about my opinions and uncensoring my opinions. And I guess I am known for not filtering my opinions and it's fun I recommend it and the same goes for reptiles and over time you can see my opinions getting worse and worse on species <laughs> as I make videos about them and emerald scales is something that I started over two years ago which is where we take in animals from people or reptiles specifically and then find new homes for them by selling them on the site and emerald scales just built way too quickly for me not too quickly for me like it just built way too more quickly than I expected it ended up building so fast that we had more inquiries than we could take in. So we started having to throttle the animals. And the thing is, I had employees. The most I've had at once is a business partner and two employees. So it was a team of four. And the thing is, the employees are always in charge of the reptile care because you usually employ people to do the most basic of tasks that are the easiest to delegate to other people. And so all of my time became just managing the logistics of all of these animals and to date, I think I think we hit 500 animals that we've taken in. Currently, we don't have 500. I, I basically burnt myself out completely with reptiles. Like, it's the most burnt out I felt doing anything because I love making videos. It's still one of my favorite things, but I am so tired of making reptile videos. And I think you can, a lot of people have been able to tell from my content that my opinions often get muddled together because I'm just tired of it overall. But it's not the kind of hobby you can just put on a shelf. You can't just store away. Like, you can just store your piano away in the closet, or you can uninstall your games that you got bored of, but you can't really just take a break from reptiles without rehoming them. Now that I've been kind of forced to move, which I wasn't kicked out, I wasn't evicted. Um, instead, I felt, I felt forced because it just wasn't working. And like I said earlier, Animal control was called on us and they had to come and everything went well, like I said, but I'll give details on that later. And it's just, I felt the need to get out of the space to stay mentally sane, to keep the animals safe, to stay comfortable and stuff like that. And then at some point in that, I realized I don't have to take in all the animals. And so we started really throttling how many come in. 
at this very moment, I think there's 80 people with about 120 animals that still want to rehome at this very moment. Uh, they've already prepaid for the rehoming and everything. And I plan on still taking those in, but very slowly. And so my basically the point I'm getting to is I really want to take a break from, not from YouTube, not from video creation, not getting rid of all my personal animals, but I am so tired of emerald scales. <laughs> and a lot of people ask, how can I make a company like yours? How can it be successful? And I'm like, I don't know. Mine isn't even that profitable. The reason Emerald Scales is profitable is because it's a subsection of Go Herping, which is a sole proprietorship. And thanks to Emerald Scales, I can make stuff like the unboxings. And the unboxings make so many views, or get so many views, that I make a lot of money from those. And that, thankfully, covers the expenses for the animals. So Emerald Scales itself breaks even just about. Uh, currently, I just have one full-time employee who does some overtime and then it's me. And obviously, this is kind of a passion project. I started it as a passion project, but the passion is gone. And I'm not saying that it's gone permanently, but right now, I can't find it. <laughs> it's it's missing, I guess you could say. Yeah, I've just been kind of trying to think a lot, like what do I actually want to do? Um, do I want to just take in some animals? Do I want to just take in leopard geckos? And I go back and forth a lot. My mood, I have very strong mood swings and pretty decent anger issues where I just get so fed up with stuff where I'll be, I'll have a moment where I'm like, I want everything gone. I don't want any animals in my sight. And then 12 hours later, I'll be like, I want to take in every reptile because this is the best thing ever. But those instances of having those really positive high swings are really depleting to where I almost always have the low swings of just having no interest. So I'm not like shutting down the company or anything, but I think the two most likely things I'll do is either one, do things very slowly and very casually. So I can just have one employee that does almost full time that can manage everything uh, animal wise. And then I just do some of the logistical work, some of the legal work, some of the finance work and the videos. And then I have the time to do other stuff that isn't caring for the reptiles, like focusing on more unique video content. Um, I have an editor now who I haven't had one for very long. I told, used to tell myself I'd never get an editor, but the time did come because my time was so constrained, it was the only way I could upload to the channel, and I don't like that. I, I still love having an editor, it turns out. It's really convenient and really nice, and I'm still gonna do that, but I miss being able to work on projects myself. And um, either A, having a complete undetermined length hiatus with Emerald Scales, or B, having things trickle in extremely slowly so that um, it doesn't take up that much time. In the house I'm in right now, I can't really have reptiles, so it'll be a while anyway, and I'm gonna get this kind of break to see how it feels. And that sewage smells terrible. Just thought I'd let you know. I will admit I have gotten more bored of some of my personal animals. I have rehomed a few. Um, the one you know about is Ember, who I actually did a video on, the Kenyan sand boa and I'll see what I actually end up keeping. I don't plan on just ditching all of my personal animals. My favorites for sure are Harriet and Franklin, my turtles. Um, I also have another turtle I haven't shown you yet. There's also my snapping turtle, which I'm not really attached to him, but he's still chilling. And then there's Rosie, the boa, and um, Stan are probably at the top of my list, like favorite wise. And I do plan on keeping more because I don't want to get out of the slump and then regret rehoming all of them. Or any of them so I'm not planning on completely ditching animals but I think it's a shame to talk about and fair to fill you in on that even just my hours in the day are so constrained um, this is the longest break I've gotten in weeks probably <laughs> not really but it's it's not far off I'm gonna sit on this stump there's some oh, there's a slug I don't want to sit on the slug I'll sit in front of the slug. So obviously most of you are here for reptiles and reptile content, but thankfully my other content also seems to do pretty well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to focus videos on my personal animals. Um, I have some updates coming in just various videos. By now I've probably already uploaded a potato video, and I want to do a video on Rosie that I already filmed. I just haven't edited that one. Like one thing I do, maybe I already mentioned in this video, but I really like staying in different Airbnbs, finding unique Airbnbs. I love tiny houses and minimalism, 
So finding houses that match that, it's a really cool inspiration and a really cool way to check out different places that I'm interested in staying or even living long term. Um, I can't do long term travel with the number of animals we have right now. I still don't want to like go on super long trips. Uh, when we used to do family trips, we never went very far. The furthest we went was a couple states away. And so I'm not comfortable with international travel yet. Uh, also, I guess that'd be kind of difficult at this period in time. But what I hated, it, it took me all to admit this to myself, but I might as well admit it on camera, is think about like as someone that hated school and every minute of it. Um, you think about the bell ringing at 3.15 in my case, and you just have that vision of what you're going to do at 3.15 the moment you have that freedom. And every time you think about it, your stomach gets that anxiety drop, but like that excitement drop. I hate it, but when I think about reptiles not being the main thing I do, I get that excited stomach drop. And it's depressing, but it is true. And I'm not saying that it's permanent, but right now it is the case. And um, the growth on the channel is phenomenal right now. Every number is up. The subscribers, the views, watch time, revenue, comments, likes, everything is up. And I don't want to throttle that, but I think it will naturally start being throttled if I don't slightly pivot my um, content to what I still want to make and what I find interesting. So yeah, I want to see, maybe the Airbnb videos will suck and if they do, I'll stop doing them. I will probably still have at least 50% of the content to be reptile related. Um, I really like doing the sit down commentary style videos like the Am I a Furry video <laughs> and the other quiz videos, the vegetable quizzes. Uh, that's some of my favorite to make. It's so casual. It's To me, I find it entertaining. A lot of people hate it, but I like it. And it didn't perform amazingly, but again, that's all perspective because I used to think that 100 views was absolutely phenomenal, and it still is. That's a, nearly 100 people just like paying attention to you. Uh, but I mean, once I've had videos that hit a million, two million views, Getting one that hits 50,000 just feels lame, which is depressing, but uh, the other side is obviously the revenue, and I do have to pay for stuff. I have to pay right now for two houses, and then I'll be paying potentially for three at once when I purchase a home, so I do still need an income. Uh, so I do obviously partially base content on that, but that's not completely what I base it on, because I really do have to enjoy the content to upload it, and I scrap videos all the time that I don't think are good enough. And if one just really bores me, I try to not upload it unless I really have to upload a video. And that's really not that common because I can go a while without it. A lot of people say that even if you're working for yourself, um, if you can't actually take a break from the con from what you're doing, you still basically have a job because you have those requirements. And I don't really, I can take like, I was uploading every three days for the past few weeks, and then I didn't upload for nine days just now, maybe 10 or even more. Uh, that wasn't because I wanted to, it, I didn't want to take a break at all because I really love uploading content and that is my priority. But the animals took so much time the past few weeks that I just physically couldn't. Even with an editor, I didn't have time to sit down and outline a video and record it to send to him. So uh, he is editing some as we speak, but I just got super behind. So basically, I am completely indescribably burnt out of reptiles at the moment, and I don't think it's permanent, but um, I think that, but that is my reason for at least temporarily downsizing the reptiles. And I really don't want more than, if you forced me to pick a number of my max right now, I'd say no more than two dozen Emerald Scales animals. Um, the most we had at once previously was maybe 120, 140, and that was because I had the house that you just saw. Um, it was the downstairs living room, hallway, upstairs, both bedrooms were all animals. It was organized, it was clean, the animals were getting the care they needed, but that was uh, two employees, that was me doing tons of work, that was all of our time being sucked up by reptiles, and it was stressful and overwhelming so I'm going that's basically what I'm saying is 20 compared to 120 plus is a big difference but again my one biggest priority is making content because it's my favorite thing YouTube is my favorite place I spend a ton of time on YouTube as a viewer um, and as a creator obviously it was always my dream to be originally when I made the channel I wanted to be like a National Geographic but then after about a year, I just wanted to be a full-time YouTuber, and I achieved that. And I never felt like I did, and I never got to really soak it in. 
and I just want to be able to spend almost all of my time making videos. And uh, the more videos I can make, the more they can be off topic and not just about reptiles. So I don't expect the following to be the exact same or stick around entirely, but who knows, maybe I'll go back to 100% reptile stuff. I'm not changing the name or anything. I'm not making some massive change right this moment. Just wanted to share this stuff with you. So there's probably a lot I forgot. I got up at 2 a.m. I think, and now it's 9 a.m. So I'm like halfway through my day. I don't know what my sleep schedule is. I got some, some breakfast and I'm really thirsty right now. So I'm probably gonna go get a drink. And yeah, I look forward to even just this talk, talking it out. Cause I've talked, like thankfully my girlfriend Alice will listen to literally anything I wanna say for as long as I want to talk. It can be hours and I can just complain and she'll put up with it. But it's also nice to be able to lay it out in a video, even if I don't upload this. It's uh, talking it out makes me excited for what I want to do, because I am temporarily quitting my job, I guess, <laughs> of emerald scales, even though I own emerald scales. Yeah, and the other thing is, there's just all, just knowing there's all of these reptiles that are out there that need new homes and that need help, it's even more painful. And sorry, my arm's a little shaky because it's tired from holding this camera and I'm weak. It's literally just my phone. Um, but I just have to try and remember that the other animals out there are not my responsibility. In a perfect world, um, every reptile would just be purchased when the person is ready and it wouldn't have to be rehomed. But also a perfect world would be really boring because there's just nothing interesting and conflict and issues aren't necessarily a bad thing. Wow, I'm 14 and this is deep. I hear a woodpecker. I like being outside too. You know, outside is that cheesy inspirational place. Um, but there was no inspiration in this video, so yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go finish up the things at the house, get some stuff in the car, and make my way back so that the house can be cleaned professionally because apparently I didn't do a good enough job. And back we go. I feel like I just rambled way too much, but personally, when there are those kind of special creators I really enjoy watching, I like the rambling videos and the, there's a frog. Is it a frog? Nope. Yeah, it is. I don't know where it went. See, I get very distracted. And I, I just kind of try and make the occasional content. And I definitely want to kind of make this order. But yeah, um, if, you're, if you're still watching, congrats, you had nothing better to do. <laughs>